Hey folks, it's Mike. Um, I'm on my way to uh, Camp Morton this evening because the Northern Lights are making a very, very big statement tonight and I don't want to miss it. Um, so uh, just stop by at uh, Tim Hortons here just to, uh, just to grab something and uh, I'll be on my way. So let's go. Anyway, um, so I made it to uh, Camp Morton safely, um, just uh, shooting Northern Lights and uh, getting some pretty good shots. Uh, lots of pinks, lots of purples, um, a little bit of green, uh, which is still cool. Um, I, uh, you know, of course, um, looking at the, uh, the Northern Lights forecast over the last day and it's like, it's gonna be really, really strong. Uh, KP8 apparently. Um, it's a Saturday, or sorry, Friday night. Um, Saturday is also supposed to be quite nice as well. Um, whether or not I go for, out for that or not, I don't know. Um, never say never. Um, but uh, kind of also wanted to come out here um, and shoot the, the night sky just to sort of as a bit of a tribute to, uh, to Alan Wallace, uh, who passed away back, uh, um, I think it was late March now. Um, you know, an astrophotographer that uh, I greatly admired um, on YouTube um, and sadly passed away. Uh, and yeah, I just wanted to sort of do something as a bit of a tribute and um, Northern Lights, kind of hard to beat that. Okay, so I'm not sure how much the camera is seeing here. Uh, let's see if I can actually sort of, you know, bump it up in post, but uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's around. The Northern Lights are here. And, uh, oh, fan up to the sky. Eh, kind of hard, tough, tough to say. Um, And of course, the Canada geese are around. I guess I want to enjoy the show too, I suppose, but uh, go away guys. I want to enjoy this.
All right, so uh, I'm shooting with uh, my 77D uh, with uh, Tokina 11 to 16 uh, lens on. Um, I want that lens just because I want to get as much of the uh, the night sky and northern lights as possible, uh, since you know the the northern lights go pretty high. Um, I'll, and uh, in terms of shooting, uh, I'm going with uh, ISO 3200, um, as wide open as I can with the Tokina, which is f2.8. And uh, I've been sort of experimenting between five and eight seconds, uh, even 10 seconds at one point. Um, but uh, I will say that uh, the more brilliant that the lights are, the less shutter speed you, you need to worry about. Um, just because, you know, they're dancing, they're going all over the place. Um, so, yeah. I have to apologize for uh, not saying much uh, on location at Camp Morton. Um, it's the Northern Lights, they, uh, they do that to me. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm in such awe of the lights, especially with a night like that. Um, I, I didn't really want to do much uh, other than just take photos and photos and photos. Uh, it's, uh, it's one of the things I love about the Northern Lights is just they dance in the sky and they dance in the sky and you have to wait for uh, a lull which can take anywhere from a half an hour to an hour and a half maybe even longer um, by the time that I sort of recorded those last little bits there um, I was tired I'd been up 21 22 hours you know working uh, during the day um, so yeah, um, at, at this point, what, uh, what I can also do is to show you some of the photos that I took that night and, uh, show you how I edited some of those photos. So yeah. In terms of editing my, uh, Northern Lights photos, um, I do bump up the colors a little bit, uh, and, um, because I have to shoot at such a high ISO, um, typically 3200, sometimes 1600, um, I'll have to also apply a lot of uh, noise reduction. Uh, sadly, one thing you can't really do with Northern Lights photos is, you know, like say Milky Way photos, is to just take a bunch of them, stack them together, because it sort of turns into a bit of a blob in the sky, and you don't you don't want that. Um, so yeah, I mean, uh, taking, um, these, uh, these photos as an example, um, the one on the left is, uh, the photo as it's, uh, straight out of the camera and the one on the, uh, the right is the one that that's been edited. Um, because I was at Camp Morton down, uh, actually down right on the beach there at, uh, at, uh, water level, um, you actually do see a bit of the, uh, reflection of the, uh, the Northern Lights in the water itself, which is kind of why I wanted to go there. Um, and like, as you can see in, um, the, the edited photo, uh, I've raised the, the shadows a bit on the, uh, the rocks in the foreground just to show you a bit of where I was. Um, and, um, you know, um, for example, as you can see with the, uh, the before and the after photos, the, the before photo, you can see a lot of noise in there. Uh, and in the after, uh, you know, I've reduced that quite a, quite a lot. Um, and, you know, as you can see here in Lightroom here, I've, you know, just bumped up the exposure just a little bit just to, uh, just to show you some of the, the foreground, um, you know, and uh, increase the shadows just a little bit. Um, as you can see with uh, Vibrance, I've bumped that up to, as you see, 23. Um, colors, I've, you know, moved it more towards uh, magenta purple just because that's what I was, you know, seeing uh, that night. Um, and uh, like in terms of uh, saturation, really didn't do a lot. Luminance, didn't do anything as you can see. 
Uh, and uh, calibration, I did touch that just to move the, uh, the blues over a little bit towards the, the, the magenta and purples. Um, just because I really wanted to bring out those, uh, those colors because you don't see those a lot with uh, Northern Lights mostly. Uh, it's usually in the greens and the, uh, the yellows. I was uh, also experimenting with um, uh, composition as well. Um, it wasn't mostly just you know looking out towards the water uh, with, you know, and uh, seeing the northern lights over the the lake. It's always beautiful. Um, also, uh, at points, turned my camera around the opposite way, um, as you can see from this uh, this building here, down by the uh, the shoreline. Um, not too sure what it was really used for originally. Uh, Camp Morton Provincial Park, which is the exact location, um, I think used to be, I think, a Christian uh, campground, I believe. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, you know. Um, but, uh, you know, it was, it was neat see it, sort of getting those, uh, that building in the, uh, in the foreground and with the northern lights uh, up towards the, uh, well, the top of the photo, the, the sky. Go figure. I will also say about uh, the uh, the northern lights when it's uh, when it's a brilliant night like this this past night um, they appear overhead too um, even even after I got home as I said earlier that uh, even in the city of Winnipeg I could see it with all the street lights right above my head faintly but I could see it um, but it's always magical when it uh, when it appears overhead is because it. You, it's just tough to describe, really. Um, but uh, you know, as as you can see with the, some of the uh, settings here on uh, on this photo on the the left, which is the the edited photo. Yeah, I've raised the uh, the whites a little bit and dropped the shadows a little bit just to um, you know really give you a bit of a contrast between the uh, the actual night sky itself and the northern lights. Um, and again. Um, Played slightly with the uh, with the colors, um, just to just to give you that you know extra bit of punch to uh, to the photos. <sighs> yeah, it's it was definitely a magical night. Just yeah. Uh, one thing I'll say about that night was that it. I mean, the indicators were saying it was going to be a KP eight, KP nine which usually means, um, well, to be honest, I don't know what it really usually means because that hasn't happened for years. But, um, you know, going off of the usual KP5 sort of expectations, you figure KP8, KP9 would be just all over the place and just dancing and dancing and dancing and dancing and dancing. And not to say that I was disappointed it's just it wasn't sort of up to the sort of the forecasted predictions um at least for here in southern manitoba um i mean like i i do know that uh, the northern lights were seen as far south as like tennessee because my brother-in-law lives there and i saw them um but uh i'll take it you know it's the northern lights you know you know it's just it's just brilliant when they're out and dancing. Um, actually, what I also will say is that uh, when I got home at like 2 o'clock in the morning, I could see them up in the sky in Winnipeg, which you typically can't do that. So anyway, on that, uh, on that note, I'm going to finish the video and uh, do the usual like, comment, subscribe, and uh, see you next time. Last month's eclipse was certain to be the biggest astronomical event of the year. It couldn't be beaten. It was sure to be featured at the end of the year's top events of 2024. It was sure to be featured as one of the greatest events of the decade. Lady Aurora heard about the eclipse and took umbrage. So she went to her wardrobe, took her time to pick out her most resplendent of dresses, opened up her jewelry box to select her ancestor's most treasured gold and diamond encrusted necklace, and meticulously dressed herself.
This evening, she finally made her grandest appearance at the great Astral Ballroom since 2003. She dazzled all of her earthly admirers with an epic waltz with the skirt of her dress flowing across large swaths of the night sky. I decided to have a seat on a rock on the beach at Camp Orton to take in the Grand Dame's performance. Bravo, madame. Bravo. <laughs>